that'll just come up and we're recording so just just as a fyi there um we've got an amazing uh, panel uh, ahead of us today so thank you all for uh, coming today so i'll just do a little bit of summary and then i'll just be the person asking the questions on their behalf uh, and your behalf uh, towards the end of the session so the purpose of this careers panel is to give some insight into the breadth of the careers at the nhs by meeting some really interesting individuals this panel is specifically about careers in radiology and radiography and these might be things that you know might need a bit more clarity to understand what they are in order to ask our panelists any questions feel free just to use the chat function on your screen below or the Q&A function as well. Um, we will hopefully get around to answering most of your questions by the end of the panel, but don't worry if not, you can always pick it up at a later time. Before we get into the questions, there have been some submitted already. I'd like to um, just to reiterate, we'll ask some of our own questions and then we'll come back onto yours. Um, I'd like to now welcome the panelists to introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about their journey to their current career. So I'm just gonna randomly say a name. How about you, Ricardo, if you're happy to start us off? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Rick or Ricardo Kine. I'm a therapeutic radiographer by background and currently I've moved into academia and I'm a senior lecturer to teach therapeutic radiography at City University of London. So therapeutic radiography is very much about uh, cancer and oncology. So we are specialist practitioners who are dealing with patients who are going through um, radiotherapy treatment. We're involved from day one to when we meet the patients to treatment and also to post-treatment. So we follow them through the whole journey. Okay, so therapeutic radiography is using high energy x-rays to treat cancer cells and we have all these great sophisticated um, equipment and machines that deliver the ray therapy treatment to uh, various sites, all sites of the body. And as part of our role, it's very much about working in teams, uh, supporting the patients during their, their treatment, planning the actual treatment so we know exactly where to target the, 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 the treatment to the particular site, but also involved with a lot of the kind of management of the patient care. So things such as advice, side effects, uh, trying to make sure that the patients are supported, not just physically during the ray therapy, but also emotionally and mentally. So we have a very much an invested um, kind of involvement with the patients, what we call holistic care. So we have to support them during their actual journey as well. The, the, the course that we deliver and a lot of the courses in the UK deliver is a three year bachelor's degree and it's a, a vocational degree which means that you are guaranteed a job after you qualify and the course is split up 50% of the time is academics so you go to university, you, 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 you get taught the theory, you get taught all the, the different kind of subjects such as anatomy, physiology, physics, maths. And you also spend 50% of your time in clinical practice. So it's really important that what we teach you, you can then actually use it in clinical practice. And we use very, um, our local hospitals, kind of our really reputable hospitals, but also private centers as well, which have a ray therapy unit. And our students go there and spend half their time working with the equipment, being supervised by the current staff and actually treating and supporting patients during their ray therapy journey. It's, it's an intense course, I'm not going to lie, but actually it's quite rewarding because when you qualify, you, you're usually guaranteed a job straight away. And a lot of our students in the ray therapy programs usually have a job before they qualify or usually a month after they qualify. So it's, it's got a really good career opportunity for those of you that are interested in thinking about another career other than the medicine, for example, or dentistry or veterinary. And you're registered with the Healthcare Professions Council. So you've got that professional title and that um, kind of guarantee that the course is, you know, um, has, is high quality and meets the needs of the NHS. Fantastic, thank you so much, Ricardo. Um, Kaylee, would you like to sort of introduce yourself and your sort of journey? Um, so I'm Kaylee. I'm one of the uh, diagnostic radiographers at the Royal Free Hospital. Um, so as a diagnostic radiographer, as opposed to a therapeutic radiographer, um, you'll see us um, working with uh, CT, uh, x-rays, uh, interventional theatres, uh, cardiology, uh, catheterization labs, um, and just x-ray generally uh, in A&E and in outpatients as well. Um, and MRI, I forgot that as well. 
Um, so we use uh, imaging technology to help diagnose uh, pathologies, disease and illnesses um, through these uh, high tech equipment, uh, such as the MRI scanners, X-rays um, and CT scanners. Um, so we use uh, radiation, um, but also um, in certain areas like MRI, we also use different uh, approaches such as um, like in MRI, you'd use mag magnetic wave um, and in ultrasound, you'd use um, a different, um, so it's, it's all di a different variety of um, ways to use, sorry, uh, to uh, approach. Um, so as opposed to a therapeutic radiographer, um, we don't, we're not involved in the treatment uh, process, so we're involved in the diagnosis. Um, so you, um, I guarantee that any patient that comes through the hospital, um, probably 95% will see a diagnostic radiographer along the way. Um, because without us, we're sort of at the centre center of the hospital. Without us, you cannot diagnose diseases. Um, so as opposed to a radiologist, uh, we don't do the reporting um, element. So they would they would be um, in charge of that. Um, but there are a variety of career pathways that you can take um, once you become a, a diagnostic radiographer, which will enable you to actually go down that route so you can do uh, plain film, um, so x-ray um, reporting, uh, you can become a lecturer, you can um, specialise in certain areas such as CT, so um, computer tomography scanning, uh, MRI scanning, um, and even ultrasound as a um, as opposed to um, other careers where you're just sort of stuck in one um, in one uh, career. Um, so like I said, we take the, the images um, as opposed to actually reporting, um, and the career itself is a three-year degree um, undergraduate degree, um, which includes a range of modules. So I, I know that a lot of students uh, normally come into radiography and they're thinking the physics is, you know, the thing that they're really scared of. Uh, but actually, my advice to everyone is don't be afraid of the physics. It's actually not that overwhelming. And everyone starts on a foundation um, level and everyone's at the same you know stage as, as you. Um, but my favourite part of the job is the interaction with patients, um, as opposed to a, a therapeutic radiographer we don't have that sort of length of time with the patients you know it's quite a it's much quicker um because the scanning is, isn't that uh, intense but um it's it's the the range of patients you see and come across every day um the a range of areas that you work in it's you know every day is different uh, you rotate around the hospital one day you'll be in theaters one day you'll be downstairs in the outpatient scanners uh, and another day you might be working alongside nurses and doctors in the interventional labs. Um, so that's my favourite part of it. And as well as the anatomy and physiology side as well, because that's obviously um, a huge part of, of what we do. Um, yeah. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, I feel like it might be worth asking this question because I think it's related to you, Kelly. But Yvonne's asked, can this branch out into physiotherapy? Um, if you go down this route, I don't know if you know that. Um, I'm not sure of that. Um, I'm assuming, I mean, with radiography, I think it's one of those careers where, because, uh, you know, with allied health, uh, healthcare professional uh, careers, uh, you can, you, everyone starts with doing anatomy, physiology, that type of um, module in their first year. So I think um, maybe, I mean, don't quote me on this, but um, maybe you could probably go into physiotherapy um, by doing like a postgraduate maybe. Um, and maybe like it cuts down your so if you wanted to for example if you wanted to do um if you wanted to become a doctor um it sort of takes away that first year of medical school um that's as far as i'm aware anyways um so i'm assuming it might be the same with physiotherapy but don't quote me on that <laughs> fair enough um, and it's you know like like anything do to take this little bit with a pinch of salt and make sure you just do your own research and you know ask the right questions where you get them so don't you worry about that but thank you so much for that kaylee really really helpful and Ishan, would you like to share your, your story? Yeah, of course. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Ishan. I'm one of the um, radiology registrars. I'm a radiologist in training, working at University College London Hospitals. Um, so uh, it, it's a bit tricky, obviously, not being able to see all of you. So I don't really know what the background is. and how, I don't know how much you guys really know about what radiology is. But essentially, for those that don't, it's 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 a medical branch that's focused on imaging. So back in the day, you used to have sort of people coming into GPs and going into hospitals, and they get 
you know, they go in, they tell their story, they get examined, you get a diagnosis. But in modern medicine, you have imaging and imaging is now very, very crucial. And as Kaylee said, when you go into hospitals, certainly about 95% of the time, you'll be imaged in one way or another, whether that's through MRIs, whether that's through x-rays, whether that's CT, which is also a, a modality of x-rays. Um, now I'm a radiologist and that, that means that I'm a medical doctor, first and foremost, who focuses, as KB said, mainly on reporting the scans that are done um, in partnership with the radiographers. Um, but of course, there's other aspects to the job that um, a radiologist would do that, um, that sort of some of the other radiology specialties don't. So the, the overall, as I said, it's all based on medical imaging. And there's two branches that I would train in as a radiology registrar. So there's diagnostic radiology, which focuses on um, diagnosing and reporting and performing procedures. So for example, I perform fluoros fluoroscopic procedures. So that's get, gaining the images from sort of contrast dye. So basically what we do is we give people dye and we get them to swallow it. And then we take pictures using x-rays. And um, by doing that, we sort of gain an idea of how the dye goes down their stomach and things. And I'm involved in taking those pictures. And I'm also involved in reporting them and giving a diagnosis. Now, the other arm of radiology is interventional radiology, and that's image-guided procedures. So, for example, let me give an example. Say you're over 80 and you have a stroke. Sometimes um, you'd go to the hospital and you'd be treated by a neuro, an interventional neuroradiologist. So what they would do, if, if the case is correct, is it's essentially minimally invasive surgery. So they'd make a small puncture in one of your blood vessels, stick a wire down and pull the clot out. And once the clot's pulled out, the blood vessel will rebuffuse. And that means the blood, the blood will start flowing in the brain again. Now, not all of interventional radiology is like that, but that was an example to sort of give you an idea of what interventional radiology is. So as part of my role, I train in diagnostic radiology and interventional radiology with a view to specializing or choosing my expert field later on. And um, how did I get here? So it, it's quite long actually. So it's one of the longer processes. So it's five years of medical school and then you can call yourself a doctor. After that, you start getting paid for the job that you do as a doctor and you do two years of foundation training. After that, you choose radiology as a specialty. So it, it's, it's, it's quite a commitment, at five years of which you'll be paying a university. But after that, obviously, you'll start earning your own money and things get better. Um, but what I would say is absolutely, definitely consider radiology as one of, one of the best specialties. And I chose it after working as a doctor for a couple of years and I chose to come to radiology because it's absolutely amazing. The people that you work with and actually you're, you're the first person to make the diagnosis in, in a lot of cases. People don't really know what's going on until they see that image and then they know, oh, that's what it is. So if, if you're looking for answers and you're a puzzle solver, a critical thinker, radiology is definitely for you and definitely try and be a radiologist if, if that's something you want to do. Thanks. That's great. Thank you, Ashan. And yeah, actually started to answer the next question. Uh, before I ask this question, though, uh, feel free to type in your questions and I can just ask them as we go along. So don't you worry, they might be relevant to the time. So feel free to drop a question. But um, yeah, so what sort of qualifications do you need to be, you know, firstly get into studying your type of role and also ultimately to become a professional? And, feel free, and this can be open to anyone who's uh, happy to jump in. So I did a three year undergraduate degree um, in therapeutic radiography and you, you need to decide straight away when you apply to uni, whether it's a diagnostic course like Kaylee or the radiotherapy course like myself. So as I said, the, the course was split up 50% uh, of the time at uni and then the other 50% of the time was in a clinical placement. And what the university tries to do is do a rotation model. So they send you around various hospitals that have ray therapy department. So you pick up lots of experiences. You get to see lots of different patient types, clinical specialities and different equipment as well. So I did that for about 10 years. And then I had the opportunity to work in Australia. So I moved to Melbourne for a couple of years to work in 
ray therapy. And then from Melbourne, Australia, I moved to the United States for another two years to work in Las Vegas in ray therapy as well. So when I came back, I decided that I wanted to work clinically for another couple of years, but then moved into academia. So I moved to teach therapeutic radiography and I had to do extra studies, so postgraduate studies. I had to do a teaching certificate, which was for about a year. I also did a master's, which was um, another three years. And then subsequent to that, I've just completed my PhD about two years ago. So I have a, a PhD as part of my research role uh, as an academic, but also researching into uh, therapeutic radiography which means that I can work towards my ultimate goal, which is a professor of radiography. Um, so I, I mentioned this before as well. Um, so I did a three year degree um, where I chose diagnostic, obviously before um, applying um, straight away. Um, so I spent three years, um, I studied in Liverpool um, and then I started my band five uh, job straight, straight away. So it was like, um, like Ricardo said before, um, you're guaranteed a job pretty much after um, you qualify um, and I currently um, I'm working throughout the department so I work in CT, um, I work in MRI, um, in interventional radiology and cardiology uh, so like I'll come across someone like Ishan um, and just general x-rays and uh, A&E which is like I said before is one of the best things about my job I get to every day is different every day I'm in somewhere somewhere different and come across different people um so yeah. that's great thank you um we do have a question from Sharon um just wondering is uh, to become a radiologist do you have to be a doctor or are there any other pathways that you might know of um so as far as I'm aware radiologist you have to become a doctor. So you have to do those five years of medicine um, and then those two years of foundation training. And then you choose to specialize um, in radiology, which is a five year program. So at the end of those five years, you call yourself a radiologist, a consultant radiologist. And that, that's, I think that's the only way you can become a radiologist. That's great, really helpful. Thank you. And thank you for clarifying that. Um, okay, let's, let's sort of make this a bit more relevant to our times. So obviously, we're in a, you know, COVID has affected our, our world. Just wondering, has it affected your how you do your day to day and your role? And um, feel free, anyone can jump in. Um, for us, I know that, um, well, it's changed our job massively. Well, it impacted us quite a bit. Um, I can say that it's... Um, it's been a difficult and stressful time. Um, obviously, COVID hasn't been fun for anyone, but um, as well as uh, people being redeployed to different areas like ITU, um, obviously, like I said before, diagnostic radiographers, without um, x-rays and scans, you, you can't really help the, the treatment or the diagnosis process um, for these COVID patients. Um, and we found that, um, especially working at the Royal Free, which is an infectious diseases hospital, uh, we've had, uh, you know, obviously hundreds of, of patients coming through with COVID. Um, so the way it's impacted us is obviously the, the PPE, um, you know, mobile x-rays. So obviously these ITU patients who are really, really ill, they obviously can't come down to us. And to minimise the cross-contamination of obviously the COVID, you don't want to be bringing them down constantly to the department um, and they're unstable as well. So um Instead, we have mobile x-ray machines, so just like a mini um, x-ray machine that goes up to the, the ward or um, the ward or, or ITU itself. Um, so obviously, we've had to be involved very heavily in the PP um, aspects of, of uh, things, um, as well as getting sometimes 10 to 12 um, CT scans, uh, so patients coming down from ITU a day. Um, so that's obviously um, been very difficult. but it's been very, very rewarding. And it's, you know, it's just something that we've had to deal with and it's just part of, of the healthcare profession now, so. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Just to jump on what, what Kaylee said, um, when it came to radiologists at UCLH, a lot of us were redeployed in the first wave because as I said, you're initially a doctor. So a lot of them, a lot of us went to ITU um, where there was real need for um, all sorts of medical professionals with any sort of medical skill to sort of be able to help 
um, care for these patients. The other thing, as Katie said, is there's lots of PPE um, that we have to don and doff continuously. There's new pathways that have been opened for COVID patients. So as, as she said, they don't get brought down to you. You have to sort of go up there. So in my hospital, we've got COVID portables where there's always a registrar on who's going to do ultrasound on any COVID positive patient because there's, there's always the risk of sort of passing COVID around if you bring them down through lifts, through corridors, you're gonna come into contact with other professionals and other patients more importantly as well. Um, I, I would say that during the peaks, we definitely, in terms of our imaging, we saw a lot of specialized imaging for sort of clots in lungs that can happen because of COVID. So lots of CTs, CTPAs um, is what they call to see, um, uh, what they call CTs that you sort of try and find a clot in one of the vessels in, in the lungs. Um, so there was a lot of those um, and almost every patient coming in with COVID was getting one of them and they, they still sort of almost tend to get one as soon as they walk in through the door um, because that's just how high the risk is of, of forming a clot if you've got COVID. So it's actually part of it, the parts where I was really scared because, you know, you used to get these sort of 30 year olds coming in and as a radiologist, you would see the scan and the lungs would just look terrible and there'd be clots everywhere. And of course, you know, you, you'd feel really sad. Um, but obviously, you know, things are getting better, but, you know, you still sort of carry those, that emotional baggage with you wherever you go. But, you know, we're in a better place now, definitely. Um, I think with therapeutic radiography, you know, cancer doesn't disappear, I'm afraid, you know, it's always there, it will always be there. And as a result, our patients are still having the radiotherapy treatment for their specific cancer. So the staff, as with um, Ishan and Katie, we've had to wear PPE. Um, our students have been part of this kind of front line as well. So all our students have been supporting um, clinical staff, uh, wearing PPE, treating patients, supporting them where they can also part of the front line. Our students who are studying on the program, a lot of our provisions have now become online. So we've done a, what we call a hybrid learning, which means that students will be taught live as we are now on Zoom, or they will have videos or recordings or resources which they will study in their own time. And we merge that kind of um, curriculum together for them to be able to continue with their, um, their learning and their teaching uh, as part of their degree. But certainly nothing's changed. We still continue on as we continue to be, you know, supporting our patients who are having their ray therapy treatments. That's great. Thank you, everyone. I've um, got a question from Sean again. Um, asking with all the new technology and new machines how do you keep up to date with technology uh, do you continue training once you're qualified um yeah, so all radiographers and also um, medical doctors and radiologists, we have what we call continuous professional and personal development or CPPD as we call it. And there's a requirement that we have to be up to date with training. So it can be new equipment, it could be going to conferences, study days, research, trials. So there's an expectation that to be um, registered as a radiographer or I assume as a doctor as well we need to uphold our kind of professional development so even though technology is changing yearly we always continue to be make sure that we're up to date and abreast with all the technology and within hospitals and trusts they may do workshops or seminars where we get to have a play with the new equipment we get to test it we get to use it before it's actually rolled out for clinical use so Learning never stops when you qualify. We're still always going to be learning. We'll always continue to learn and gain new knowledge as well. Absolutely. Um, and as Ricardo said, um, for radiologists, you, you've got, um, when you're training, you've got exams that you need to do. So in the next five years, I'll be sitting three exams. And those are only really a foundation for sort of the rest of your professional life. And you need to keep learning. So once you qualify as a consultant, you have to keep learning. And I, I guess, fortunately, that the nature of the specialty is such that it, it's all very cutting edge. Um, all these new machines, all these new images, imaging modalities are continuously being improved upon. So actually, you don't, you're not doing your job very well if you don't keep up with it. And, and, you know, I think it just becomes second nature. You don't really tend to think about it very much. I go into work and I learn new things every day. And, I'm, I'm, and I know for a fact that the consultants and the other radiographers and 
they all feel the same and um, no two days are the same and every day you're learning something new and you have to otherwise you know um there's a chat there's risk that you're sort of becoming redundant um which isn't possible in this field especially because we use so much tech yeah i, I definitely um especially when you're saying that um every day you're learning something new even throughout this whole the covid pandemic um every day at work is is different because you're you're seeing different patients who are now post covid and seeing the way that it's impacted their lungs the way that you adapt your i'm assuming your the way that you read the you know the, the reports and um even like throughout the peak of the pandemic the way that we adapted our technique to scanning patients and for things that you're saying like the ctpa for for the clots um scanning for clots um and yeah every every everything was just um has just been a learning curve and that's that's probably the best thing about the the job that every day you're going to learn something new um and technology is never gonna you know it's like never going to change it's always going to get better and better and better so we're always going to be learning something new so it's really good thank you everyone uh, got a question specifically for you, Ricardo. Here, um, just says um, you went to Melbourne. Is it easy to travel with the with the qualification? Yeah, so we're very lucky. The UK degree has a reciprocal arrangement with Australia and we, with New Zealand. So all you would need to do is just do a um, what we call a sense check of your qualification through their um, society. So we have a society of radiographers in the UK, and they have an equivalent society of radiographers in Australia. So. I think, and I'm sure Kay would agree, we're quite lucky with our UK degree because, and I'm sure Ishan can agree as well, we're, it's, a, it's a passport to the world. You can travel and you can gain your clinical experience in a different country and really, you know, use your knowledge and your skills to, to, you know, to upskill yourself. And um, some of the amazing equipment I worked on, particularly in, in Australia, has really helped me in terms of when I teach my students this kind of tech and what it does and, and how it kind of like supports the ray therapy kind of treatment. But yeah, it's, it's a reciprocal arrangement. So it's, it's quite easy. The, the only difficulty really is um, to add is, is the visa situation and um, job situation as well. Um, because everyone wants to do it and travel and work, the job market starts to get saturated in places like Australia and New Zealand where you can work and travel at the same time. So for me, if anyone's interested and in when COVID uh, lockdown eases and there's more travel abroad, it's about making sure you know where you want to work in Australia or New Zealand and target the actual hospital you want to go to to see whether they have any vacancies, whether they can actually support you through things such as visa sponsorships or, or short-term contracts. That's great. Great question as well. Thank you. And if anyone else has any questions, feel free to um, ping them in. Um, so uh, just a, a, a general question here is what advice would you give to a young person who's looking for a career in your area? Um, so I, was, I said this before, actually, but um, my number one advice would probably be because and this we get this by so many people, especially with all the careers fairs that I've, uh, I've been to. It's about the physics. Like, don't be afraid of the physics it's really not that overwhelming. Everyone starts on, on the same level. It's like when you're at school and everyone's, everyone's in the same uh, boat, you know. Um, so that, that's, that would be my number one thing. Um, and the second thing would probably be um, that healthcare is not, it's not always, it's not all about um, nurses and doctors and, you know, things like that. There's, there's so many people in the background as well. Uh, like radiographers sorry Shan um, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah radiographers you'll find us in the center of everything your diagnosis won't happen without us so um, definitely definitely give it a consideration yeah ab absolutely um, and I think th the thing that I would say um, is nothing in this world worth having comes without competition and a little bit of hard work so if you're going to come into radiology to become a radiologist, so I can only speak for my path, um, it is a commitment. It's seven years, only two of which you'll sort of start earning money from. But then, as Ricardo said, the, the, the beauty of living in the UK is that your degree is recognized by other organizations in other countries. So, for example, if you qualify as a doctor, you can go and work in Australia, New Zealand, and lots of people tend to do that. Um, 
And I guess in terms of radiology, to get into the training program, it's quite difficult um, because there is a lot of competition. But it, there is competition because, because there's something in the specialty that attracts people. And, and I don't think you should let that put you off. I know when I was sort of a lot younger, I used to constantly worry about, oh, let's have a look at the competition ratio. It's 10 to 1 or it's 4 to 1. I don't know if I'll make it. Don't look at those numbers. Just do the best you can and everything will work itself out. I promise. I think for me, I mean, <clears throat> we see lots of applicants every year. You know, we have hundreds of applications for radiography, diagnostic or radiotherapy. Um, really research which branch you want to study, because unfortunately, if you apply for both, you will get rejected. So we always suggest that whichever branch of radiography you want to study, you research that in, in so much depth, which is going online, checking the resources that are available. Um, we used to get students to spend either a day or half a day in a radiography department. Unfortunately, with COVID, that's now changed, which means uh, that's not actually part of the process anymore. So what the uh, universities have done and the College of Radiographers have done is produce virtual videos of diagnostic departments and radiotherapy departments so that students can actually, potential students, I beg your pardon, can see what it's like in that environment. And they've got podcasts, they've got talking heads of radiographers, qualified radiographers, like myself and Katie actually talking about the profession and these events as well, coming along and giving them a really good idea and understanding of what radiography is all about. And probably the final thing is, and I'm sure Ishan and Katie would agree, is the making sure your personal statement when you apply for university is really, really on point. So writing down all the skills and the knowledge and experience that you have that you feel meets the role of a, a doctor or a radiographer as part of your research and really kind of think about some of the key kind of qualities that we're looking for. So think of the NHS core values, compassion, confidence, competence, you know, all those kind of areas and do your research and, and, and link how your everyday normal skills, transferable skills can link to a health career because they there is some transferability of skills that you could use. If you demonstrate that in your writing of a personal statement and you've got a really good understanding of the course and the role that you want to go into, um, I can assure you, you will be successful. That's great, yeah. Um, uh, just, just to reassure people, there is support there as well with like personal statements, you know, you, you go through school, go through the targeted university you might want to go to, there'll be support out there. So. You know, you're not in this alone, um, but it, yeah, sounds a really exciting field to go into. Um, I know one of the things that always already been discussed is what's your favourite part of the job and is the fact that you continuously learn. But are there any other exciting or, or fun things you look forward to when you wake up in the morning? Um, I, I guess for me, um, one of the things that sort of drew me into radiology was the ability to know what the answer is. Um, I remember when I was at, when I was working as a doctor, having done five years of med school. Um, as I said, most diagnoses these days are based on imaging. Um, and I used to work in a hospital, and I remember this one time. This is when I decided that this is it. This is a specialty for me. Just sitting there, and I had the images in front of me, and I knew I had the knowledge of what I'm looking for, but I just didn't know what I was looking at because some of these images are quite complex to, and I'm still learning myself on the job every day um, to sort of get your head around. And I think that's when I knew is that I'm sitting here waiting for someone else to have a look at these images when they're right in front of me, but I don't know what the answer is. And for me, I think just finding the answer was, has always been really important. So I think every time I look at a scan, every morning when I wake up, I'm like, oh my God, what am I gonna see today? And every little variant that you see, it, for me, is it what it's, it, that's what sort of pushes me forward. I mean, when I worked as a clinical radiographer, I think the best thing for me was the patient contact and being able to see the patients and actually sometimes being in a consultation when the doctor said, you're cancer free to the patient. I mean, that's such a great kind of, you know, feeling that a patient has been cured of cancer as a result of the radiotherapy treatment that you've helped deliver. Working as an academic now, I think the best feeling is to be able to impart my knowledge and my experience I've had and 
impart that to my students, the future generation of therapies radiographers, you know, instill them with all your knowledge. So they have a really good understanding of what I went through, but also the knowledge I'm able to give them to help them with their own learning. And I think the best feeling is when you see all of them lining up in graduation with their names being called out and you think to yourself, you've done a really good job. You've got them down that three year kind of uh, struggle. I'm not gonna lie, it's hard work. And they've now, you know, qualified and, and going to um, go into the health service. So that's a really nice feeling for me, I think. Yeah, I completely agree um, on the first point. Um, my favorite part is to, is the social aspect, the communication with patients. Um, although our time with patients is much shorter than what a therapeutic radiographer would have, obviously your sessions are longer. Um, the communication with patients and that social aspect is, is one of the best things and obviously the the technology that you use um like i said before every it's always going to improve and so it's going to change so you're always learning um and in comparison to a desk job where you're just sitting down doing the same thing every day this is such a dynamic um you know situation to be in you're you're learning all the time you're continuous continuously um improving your knowledge um and you'll also have some funny stories of patients to um tell whoever you're going home to. <laughs> Amazing. Well, it sounds like a really exciting career ahead and definitely one to pursue. So um, hopefully you, everyone whose uh, tenure has been inspired. Um, we've got literally a few more minutes. So if you've got a question, do ask now. Um, but in the meantime, um, if they will be showing a poll around, then we we'll would love to um, see your feedback on how you thought this went today. Um, but yeah, just uh, give a couple of moments. Oh, there we go. I don't know if you can see um, at the bottom of the screen, there should be a poll. Uh, oh. You know, and you know, everyone's at different stages of actually understanding what they want to do. So some people will know they want to go into these fields. Some people are still at the early stages. So, you know, do you do you to continue to do further research, reach out to relevant people, you know, it's all very helpful for, you know, understanding what are the next steps. But we can see, you know, it's been very helpful for everyone. So it's just testimony how exciting um, this field is. Uh, thank you uh, so much, uh, Ricardo, Ishan and Kaylee. Um, you know, it's really appreciated that you've given your time and clearly you're very busy, clearly you've got lots going on. So we really do appreciate it. Um, as we have no more questions, uh, I feel like we'll, we'll leave it at that.